All right, so before I get started with my uh, PowerPoint here, with my presentation, I would like us all to make a LAN acknowledgement. So we acknowledge that we're on a treaty territory uh, and the homeland of the Métis. We pay our respect to the First Nation and Métis uh, ancestors of this place, and we reaffirm our relationship with all peoples from whom Canada is home. All right, so here is uh, today's uh, session agenda. Uh, we will talk about, well, I will talk about our organization, the UCT Saskatchewan. I'll talk about the English for Employment program, the curriculum, uh, program expectations, course delivery formats that we offer, the spring 2022 term schedule, um, the eligibility criteria in order for you to register for this program. I'll also highlight some of the benefits of joining the E4E. I'll go through the registration process with you, as well as I'll provide a few testimonials from our instructor and, and from our participants, from our former participants. And like Olana mentioned at the end, I will give you First of all, I'll talk about some frequently asked questions and I'll give you some time to ask any other additional questions that you might think of. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, for those who are maybe not familiar with us, uh, the Ukrainian Canadian Congress of Saskatchewan is a provincial uh, cultural organization under the national umbrella that provides programs and services for the Saskatchewan community to maintain and develop and share its Ukrainian identity and aspiration. So we have a volunteer board of directors, as well as over 155 uh, member organizations across Saskatchewan. UCC Saskatchewan engages in a variety of programs, services, and projects, including English language training, translation and interpretation services, communicator program, volunteer recognition, cultural development, historical awareness, and education. Uh, so uh, all of our programs and services are funded either by the federal or provincial governments and individual donors, as well as various uh, foundations. Okay, now we're going to take a look what uh, E4E is all about. Uh, the English for Employment program is funded by the Ministry of Immigration and Career Training, that's our government of Saskatchewan. The program assists newcomers to Saskatchewan with the development of English language skills and knowledge of the Canadian workplace culture needed to advance in the provincial labour market. So therefore, participants improve their English language skills, allowing them to function safely in the Saskatchewan labour market. Uh, as well, our participants connect to the broader community and social networks. Uh, eventually, some of our participants find and retain employment, which is compatible with their training, their knowledge, skills, and experience. Uh, and finally, um, the E4E participants are aware of any information, any resources in the community, tools, and services to support their transition into the workplace, society, and inclusive communities. Now we're going to uh, take a look at the curriculum. So the English for Employment program follows the Workplace English Language Curriculum Guide, which was developed back in 2010 by our provincial government. The curriculum is divided into six modules to guide learners towards choosing achievable practical learning outcomes. Uh, and our instructors guide the learners to what such outcomes with each part of the program. So some of the foundations of the curriculum. The curriculum has the following features. The curriculum is flexible in order to accommodate learners with different levels of English language proficiency. Because the content topics are more or less discrete, meaning they're more or less different from each other, the curriculum is uh, divided by modules so that learners can achieve and demonstrate mastery module by module. A content-based curriculum and content-based instruction balances presentation, understanding, and practice of content with language instruction. So it is addressing the content needs of learners and engages them in essential topics of interest. 
his suggested learning activities are as much as possible presented in an experiential and learner-centered manner. Suggested activities involve learner participation in authentic task-based activities appropriate to their English language abilities. And in addition to the features described below, the curriculum also allows for other additional learning opportunities, such as certification in WMIS and any other free e-learning course courses that would be relevant to the E4E content. Okay, let me know if I'm uh, talking too fast and I'm going to slow down. Um, but if you're good, just you can just uh, write in the chat in case you're uh, you're wanting me to slow down just so I can see it as well. If it's all good, I will just continue. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at those six modules that I've been talking about in the curriculum. Uh, we'll see. We can see that module one is all about the course introduction. So that includes your personal introductions, that's where the needs assessment is going to take place, and this is where you're going to set your goals for the program itself, your language, as well as your employment goals. Module two, workplace communication, uh, that will include your understanding, um, understanding and accepting of oral instructions uh, at work, getting feedback at work, working with written instructions, describing and documenting results. Module three, occupational health and safety. Um, this is where you will be introduced to the OHNS in Saskatchewan. Uh, you'll learn about protective equipment, workers' compensation and injuries, safety rules and regulations, as well as WEMIS. Module four, labor standards and human rights code. So this is where you're gonna learn about fairness at work, the Saskatchewan labor standard, standards and the uh, human rights legislation. Module five, workplace culture, is the, uh, an introductory module to the Canadian workplace culture, uh, roles and responsibilities. Um, you'll learn about uh, kind of proper way of communicating with your supervisors, coworker, other cultural considerations, ex expressing suggestions and opinions at work. And finally, module six, getting a job. Um, some of the topics that are included in, in the last modules are uh, realistic employment expectations, job search, networking, hidden job market, creating a Canadian style resume and cover letter, references, job application forms, uh, job interviews, and much more. Okay, so um, we also have some expectations for our participants that are joining the E4E program. And here are some of them. Uh, as an E4E participant, you're expected to participate in the goal setting at the beginning of the course, as well as in self-evaluation at the very end of the course. You're expected to maintain consistent attendance throughout the course. That is uh, uh, about 80%. And uh, of course, exceptions will be made to any emergency situations or uh, upon any agreement with the language services coordinator. But uh, a consistent attendance is a key for you to successfully um, complete and graduate from, from the program. Um, so our participants have to complete all course expectations, including any assignments, any group work or activities, homework if assigned. And uh, at the very end, you will have to complete um, an oral presentation that you will have to prepare uh, on the topic of your choice. I just want to stress here that the courses are interactive and not a self-study courses, right? So you are expected to actively participate in any group discussions, any debates or activities, and actively interact with your classmates and instructors. Okay, now that we learned about some of the expectations, Let's uh, take a look at how we deliver our courses. Of course, before the pandemic happened, uh, about almost two years ago, we had all of our classes um, in person at various locations here in Saskatoon. Uh, but then we had to transition to online delivery. And up to this day, we do offer online courses as well as some um, hybrid ones. So in general, now, as of now, uh, E4E program uh, delivers online 
blended and in-person classes depending on a term, either it's spring, summer, or fall. And of course, it all depends on the COVID-19 situation in our province. Online classes are delivered via Zoom, just like what you're experiencing today. You're joining this session through Zoom. Uh, blended, or as we call them, hybrid classes uh, are delivered partially online and partially in person in a specific location in the city of Saskatoon. Um, like I mentioned, all e courses are interactive, um, either virtual or in person. They offer a total of 72 hours of class instruction and are taught by our uh, professional instructors that have been with us for years. And all of them have many years of experience delivering English language training to adult learners. So some of them might be still teaching uh, EAL or ESL classes um, at other places. Some of them might be already retired teachers. So um, I just want you to note here that for the online portion of the course or the online learning, you are required to have either a computer or a laptop with a camera and with a high-speed internet access. Okay, now we will learn about our cars delivery. We'll move on to our schedule for the spring term. So here on your screen, you see the actual schedule that um, we've, uh, we're offering this spring. So we have three different courses, the E3 intensive, the E3 enhanced, and the additional kind of more of a supplemental session that called E3 Connect. Uh, the E3 Intensive is open to all learners starting at CLB 5 and up. Uh, it's a fully online course. As you can see, uh, it is uh, scheduled to be uh, offered every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays from 9 a.m. till 12 p.m. And the starting date on that one is March 1st. It will run for eight weeks until April 21st. We call it in intensive as well as because it's it's a little bit of a shorter uh, length. Then we have E3 Enhanced, uh, which is open to adult learners with a CLB 6 plus. It is a blended class, which means there is that online portion as well as in person. Therefore, it's open only for Saskatoon uh, residents because then you will have to make sure to attend the in person portion as well. Uh, so as you can see, it's uh, the online portion will be every Tuesday and Thursday from 7 p.m. till 9 p.m. And an in-person portion will be on delivered on Saturdays from 9.30 to 1.30, and the location will be determined. The start date for this uh, course is March 8th, and the end date is March 7th. So those participants who enroll in either E3 Intensive or E3 Enhanced course have also an option to register for the E3 Connect sessions, which aim at enhancing the, the overall learning experience and provide additional opportunities for practicing listening and speaking skills, okay? So say if you are to register for the E3 Intensive, you might as well enroll yourself in the E3 Connect class, which will be scheduled on every Friday from 9 to 12, from March 25th till June 17th. Like I said, this is um, more of a supplemental uh, session, uh, which is aiming to improving your uh, listening and speaking skills. Uh, our former E3 participants are also welcome to join these supplemental sessions. So I hope um, that's clear. If not, then we can you know, for sure talk about it at the end uh, in case you have any questions about the schedule. Uh, oh, we got a question actually. I'm going to answer it right away. And then um, the, uh, the reason that I kind of left the, the, that e for e connect class out there is because I didn't really want to make it either online or in person. I just wanted to leave it open to see how many participants would be interested. And if we will have a range of participants from across Saskatchewan, then the E3 Connect will be online. So, so at this time, um, it's unknown. 
closer to the date, we'll decide it's either in person or online. If we'll have majority of the students outside of Saskatoon, then it'll make uh, sense to do it online. So, okay. Thank you for the question, uh, Alessa. That's a good one. Okay, let's move on. Now we're gonna talk about the eligibility criteria. So, you know, so you're interested and um, before you can register, you can kind of, you have to fall under those criteria. Uh, under the agreement with the ministry, the eligible participants to register for the E4E programs are the ones whose status are a newcomer. So uh, a newcomer to Saskatchewan in particularly, you cannot be a newcomer living in another province. And a newcomer, right, is someone who, who was not born in Canada. You have to be at least 18 years of age or older. You have to be either a temporary resident with a, uh, who is eligible to work in Canada, so say a temporary worker, uh, or a, a permanent resident or a recent Canadian. So you have to be either one of those. You have to be either unemployed or if employed and fewer than 32 hours a week uh, on a regular basis, or if you're empl employed full-time, but perhaps you're unable to practice in your regulated occupation, right, for which you have your foreign training. Uh, you, so another, uh, so el eligible participants are also those uh, learners who have a goal to find work or if employed, increase their hours of work or find work more suitable uh, for your uh, foreign training and experience. And finally, and most important part of this eligibility criteria is to have to be assessed at the CLB, uh, minimum of CLB five or higher. So um, the Canadian language benchmark national placement guidelines, um, you, you will have to kind of meet those. And if you are lower than CLB five, um, I'll be able to get to that because we'll have some frequently asked questions at the end and um, I'll be able to uh, kind of uh, ex a touch on that. Okay. No, no questions about the eligibility? Yeah, or if you want, you can just keep them till the end. That's totally fine. All right. Uh, now I just want to highlight uh, some of the benefits of joining the program. And here they are, they are. First of all, there is no cost associated with this program, that, which means that um, all the classes are free. Uh, another benefit I think is that the, the class size is much smaller. So usually uh, on the average, we'll have anywhere from 10 to 12 participants per class, which I think is great because it, it allows for more time uh, with, uh, more interaction with your teacher, more of a support in class if you need it. Um, it's also very convenient when working with uh, in smaller groups as well on any of the activities or assignments. Another benefit is that uh, you have an option of online and in-person or blended uh, classes. Uh, it is interactive and, ex and experiential learning like uh, I've already mentioned in my previous slides. Uh, the curriculum is very comprehensive and content-based. We have professional instructors with specialized English teaching experience. Um, and I think uh, the best part of it too at the end is like you are able to make some uh, meaningful social connections and actually make, uh, make friends from people from uh, some other countries. So that's great. Usually what we see is uh, once the program is done, a lot of the participants really connect and keep in touch with each other, which is great to see. All right. Now, the most important part is the registration process. I tried breaking it down, but I'm going to try my best to explain to you uh, all the steps. So if you think like this program sounds uh, like a good fit for you and you're interested in enrolling, your first step is, of course, to uh, contacting me, uh, language services coordinator, either by mail or phone, and you will have to express your interest uh, in joining the program. Uh, you will be then required to answer a few screening questions. 
just to determine your eligibility. So I'm going to ask you questions such as what is your COB level? Are you currently employed? What is your immigration status and so on? Once your eligibility for the program is confirmed, you will proceed to the registration where you will be able, uh, asked to complete um, two different registration forms. Uh, one is called client intake form, which is our own, our internal form, our organization form. And another one is the registration form that's given to us from the province. It's called career services registration form. Um, as well as you'll have to read, understand and agree, and then eventually sign our general attendance policy doc, the GAP doc. In that document, it just basically describes the, um, you know, the consistent attendance, the rules, and say if you miss um, three classes without any reasons, then you have a chance of, uh, you know, dropping out of the class, some uh, things like that. Once you've uh, completed all those forms um, and you're officially registered, uh, you will have to get your textbooks. Now for our textbooks, unfortunately, we don't have them in any um, digital or electronic format. They're physical, they're hard copies. So we are able to give those hard copies out to our participants and even you know, mail them out if uh, you happen to be outside of Saskatoon. But for that, we require a security deposit, a $50 security deposit, which is fully refundable to you at the very end of the course. The reason we have to come up with a security deposit is because way too many books were missing in the past years. And we, we just want to you know, keep our inventory uh, of the books uh, going and, and safe. So that's the only reason we do that. And uh, just want to make sure that you understand that those $50 will be returned to you. They'll be refundable once the course is over and we receive them back, okay? And like I said, if you're located in Saskatoon, you can pick up the textbooks. And if you're outside or across Saskatchewan, then we will be able to mail the books to your mailing address, okay? And once you're all set out for the course, you have your textbooks and everything, you will receive a Zoom link together with the class uh, guidelines, either it's for online or in-person class. Usually this information is sent uh, to you closer to the start date of the course. Usually it's within two to three days before the actual uh, course start date. So then you'll be able to kind of familiarize yourself with those guidelines and to prepare to test your Zoom and test your computer, your camera and mic and everything that you need. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna check if we have any questions. Um, I'm gonna answer those, Natalia, I saw your question. I'm gonna uh, keep it till the end. Thank you for it though. Is there any questions on the registration process? Well, I decided to also share some of the testimonials that were um, submitted to me by our uh, instructors, by our teachers, as well as our participants. So um, the following testimonials are kind of here to just, well, first of all, our teachers shared their own perspective on the benefits of the English uh, for employment classes for newcomers. So here we have one of our E3 instructors, Carrie Anderson. He's actually our long time instructor uh, at UCC Saskatchewan. She started with us many years ago back when we were offering uh, just a regular English class stage one and two. And here is what she uh, wrote. I really enjoy being an instructor in free. The participants are eager to learn and improve their skills for the job search and the workplace. They're also eager to learn new terms and phrases as we explore the different modules of the program, ranging from occupational health and safety to workplace communication and culture and fairness in the workplace. It is so encouraging to see our participants' confidence and skills grow throughout the program as they apply for new positions within the community, receive job offers in their areas of employment and make friends with other E3 participants. Okay. 
Now we have uh, our new addition in 2021, our newer instructor, Reza, who is also a professional IELTS exam tutor. Um, he shared his testimonial about the EFRI program. And this is what he wrote. Newcomers in Canada may find Canadian workplace cultures such as methods of communication and working relationship different from that of their home country. Learning and understanding the rules, values, and behaviors expected in the workplaces in Canada is a very important step in looking for and keeping a job in Canada. Whether you're seeking a job, have just been employed, or have been working for a few months, the English for Employment program is for you. We, uh, we, if we're instructors, can put you on the road to success. We help you understand your work environment, connect to the job market, and learn effective English language skills required for work in Canada, among others. Okay, and here we have um, another EFRI instructor, Elizabeth Carle. She's actually a retired school teacher. And this is what she uh, stated. The EFRI program has helped me appreciate the beauty and richness of the diversity each student brings. And I am honored to share my knowledge of our workplace culture and teach students skills they need to help them find success and happiness and happiness in Canada. The UC Saskatchewan supports students with great resources and guest speakers, as well as online courses such as Women's. I consider the E4E program a very important link in helping newcomers integrate into the Canadian workplace. So I think those are just all great testimonials. And I just have a couple, uh, or actually a few, to share from our participants. Um, so here is Victor Reyes. He is a newcomer from Chile, and he shared his experience attending IFRI Enhanced classes back in the spring of 2021. So he stated that um, UC Saskatchewan English for Employment program definitely is one of the most helpful English programs that I've been in. Not just help, uh, not just helping me improve my English skills, it also gave me tools to face my work in Canada, giving me knowledge about Canadian regulations, work safety, and many other important topics that a newcomer needs to know. And here we have another participant, um, Cayetana Jr. So he's from Humboldt, Saskatchewan. Together with his family, he immigrated to Saskatchewan from the Philippines back in 2014. And he is sharing his experience participating in the EFRI program and taking fall 2021 term online classes. And this is what he wrote. First of all, my experience during attending the EFRI I describe as huge achievement to my language barrier and Canadian information, culture, and heritage. I can speak words that I've never heard before, like those on uh, uh, those buzzwords, uh, a lot of knowledge and information regarding labor code, job opportunities, human rights. If you decide to do the business and loans, guidelines regarding the rights of being a uh, resident in Canada, and a lot more informative ideas that each student can develop confidence itself. I was also having fun with conversations and chat with my teacher and classmates. The teachers are approachable as well as my classmate. You will enjoy and develop your way of speaking, listening, and communication. Okay, I have a couple more for you here. This one is uh, from Ahmad Moret. So Ahmad initially migrated to the province of Ontario from Bangladesh, and then he relocated to Saskatchewan. And currently he is residing in the city of Saskatoon. He was one of the participants in the fall term. And here is what he's saying about the IFRI. IFRI is one of the best programs I have done so far. It's improved my English, uh, especially vocabulary, and learned lots about Canadian work culture. Specifically, I would like to mention about sandwiched feedback and how to resolve conflict in the workplace. Definitely, I would recommend every newcomer should enroll for this program. Okay, and finally, um, we have Katerina Gnatyuk, um, she took um, the fall, she was one of the participants in the fall term of last year as well. Um, Katerina wrote her testimony in Ukrainian, but I'm just going, uh, going to give you a, a little bit of a summary here what she's saying. So um, she 
sorry, before I do that, I'm just going to mention that she is actually the recent Saskatchewan newcomer. She only moved to Canada um, the S September of last year and is currently residing in the town of uh, a small town of Watson together with her husband. Um, and uh, I think I mentioned that she moved from Ukraine. So here Katrina uh, expressed her gratitude for the opportunity to participate in the free course and for all the useful information she received. She stated that she enjoyed the course and had a sad moment when she realized the course was coming to an end. She stressed that the group of students, teachers and guest speakers were great. She was studying with pleasure. And uh, moreover, she stated that this learning experience and interaction with other newcomers played a very important role in her adaptation to Canada as she was struggling in the beginning. So like I mentioned, provided below is her testimony in the Ukrainian language. I'm pretty sure some of our participants today who are, I believe from Ukraine will be able to read that. All right, and just a few pictures that I wanted to share um, from our classes back in 2020 and 2021. So you see like the ones that are online or through Zoom and some of them that were either in person or blended. Uh, were held in one of the uh, city uh, civic facilities here in the city of Saskatoon. Um, here you can see that some of them are either listening to a presenter or a guest speaker, and some of them are presenting themselves or doing any group activities. And uh, um, just wanted to mention that uh, uh, according to um, you know the COVID situation in our province, we do follow. Uh, all the uh, provincial requirements as well as the facilities um, requirements for running the in-person classes. And you can tell that each participant has their own table, um, they're wearing a mask and they're not sharing any of the textbooks or anything like that. And that takes us to the frequently asked questions. Sorry, just um, my throat is really dry. Um, so I just wanted to share most common questions that I receive about the E4E. Maybe some of those will be answered and maybe you, you also had that type of a question and uh, you'll be able to get your answer. The first one is asking um, about the how you can get assessed for your English proficiency if you're not sure what your English level is. Um, if you're not sure, if you've never done any placement test, you can book a placement test at the LARC. So LARC is the Language um, Assessment Referral Center. It's located here in Saskatoon. Uh, it's provincial though. So if you're a permanent resident and you can, you'll be able to book your online appointment um, for the placement test, as well as in person if you are located in Saskatoon. Uh, if you happen to be a temporary resident, a pre worker, then you'll uh, be able to reach out to Newcomer Information Center here in downtown Saskatoon and make an appointment there for your placement test. Or if you're um, out in the rural area in the province, you can reach out to your local college and then ask if they are able uh, to book in for a placement test. Now, also, if you happen to have um, any other tests done, for your immigration to Canada, like IELTS, um, I'll be able to consider that and convert it to the CLB. Okay. Another common question that I receive is about, um, you know, not meeting the minimum of CLB criteria, eligibility criteria. So someone who is assessed at CLB four um, is, say able to join the program with some exemption. So there is a possibility, but this is all determined on case by case basis. Um, it really depends on your situation or employment and learning goals. And like I said, it'll have to be an exemption, meaning that you will have to be exempted by our contract manager uh, to take in order to take this program. So that involves uh, filling out the form that involves kind of uh, giving a lot of um, proof of how this program can benefit you so that uh, they will be able to um, you know, justify your exemption, but it's possible. 
like I already mentioned, I believe throughout the presentation, um, the EFRE program is only offered to Saskatchewan newcomers. So unfortunately, if you're out of the province, um, you are not able to participate or to, to register for this program. Uh, like I said, it is funded by our Ministry of Immigration and Career Training, uh, Government of Saskatchewan, therefore they're not, um, they uh, don't really want uh, newcomers from other provinces joining this, right? Because I'm pretty sure there are other similar programs in, um, in other provinces that they can join. All right, number four, I didn't have a computer or a laptop. Can I use my iPad, tablet, or phone to join e free classes uh, through Zoom? Um, it is actually recommended that you use either a computer or a laptop uh, for a better learning experience, right? Because you'll have to interact with your instructors. You'll have to do some group activities. You'll be split in groups. You'll be in the breakout rooms. You'll be doing your presentation. So um, your tablet or iPad or phone is just not suitable for this type of learning, you know, the, the content will be just too small on your screen, that'll be hard to follow. Um, number five, do I need the textbooks? I don't really wanna pay $50, I get that a lot. And I just want to stress again that it's, it's just a security deposit that we had to um, come up with in order to kind of uh, secure our books. And that $50 will be fully refundable to you at the very end of the course. So um, you are actually required to, ha to have access to the textbooks because you'll be assigned readings uh, from some of the chapters. You'll be assigned uh, workbook exercises. So those are really important to have. And the last and the very, very, very common question that I receive is about the certificate. So, Okay, I take I took this program and I finished it successfully. Am I going to get anything? Uh, and the answer is yes. Participants who successfully complete the course, um, it will be based on your attendance. So a minimum of eighty percent, um, you will receive a certificate of completion as well as the uh, progress report card. Now the progress report card is just basically stating uh, what modules you've completed. So. It's just kind of a good, uh, good addition for you to have. And so that is it. I'm going to stop recording.